thing we have to understand is that the vestibulum shares the inner ear with the cochlea. So we're looking down at the skull. Here's the frame and magnum. And there's a, the ear canal is right here, and it comes in, and here's the inner ear. It's right here. And in that inner ear are both the labyrinth in red and then the cochlea over here. So it's one big happy family. And in fact, the endolymph that bays the cochlea also bays the membranous labyrinth. So there, the endolymph is made over here by the stria vascularis, and there's a canal here called the canal reunions that allows this endolymph to get into the vestibular uh, apparatus. Despite sharing this, uh, the endolymph, and despite sharing this common uh, housing, there, there's some big differences between the cochlea and the uh, uh, vestibular apparatus. Um, one is that the frequencies that are that we deal with are really on really really different scales. So remember, in hearing, we're dealing with up to 20 kilohertz of sound. Um, in uh, this, in the vestibular situation, most of the stimulation is below 10 hertz, below 10 hertz. Uh, probably all of it is below 25 hertz. When you're walking, what you're doing with your head, the movements of your head are around 2 to 3 hertz. So that's the kind of vestibular stimulus that you need. So 2 to 3 hertz means that you, let's say 2 hertz means you have 500 milliseconds in which to respond to a stimulus. Do you need 80 millivolts outside in the, in the endolymph to do that? Well, the answer is no. And so the endocochlear potential, which is absolutely critical for auditory responses in the cochlea, is not present in the vestibulum. There is no positive 80 millivolts. It's a, it might be a little bit over zero, but it's not it's nowhere near positive 80 millivolts, and you can lose the endocochlear potential, and you will still have perfectly fine uh, vestibular function. Another way that it's different is that there, there are some simply molecules that are present in the, in the cochlea that are not needed in the vestibulum. One of them is Preston. Preston's that molecular motor that allows the outer hair cell to dance. Uh, we don't need dancing outer hair cells. We don't need dancing hair cells at all. And so the vestibulum doesn't, ha doesn't need Preston. So when a person has a Preston mutation, they're deaf and they have absolutely no problem with the vestibular function. Another one is, is uh, otopherlin, 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 which is the synaptotagmin of the cochlea. It's the calcium sensing a molecule that allows for uh, synaptic transmission between the hair cell and the auditory afferent. Um, if there's a mutation there, a person is deaf, but we don't use, the vestibulum doesn't use that, so no problem there. Okay, so there are some differences. There are some non-syndromic uh, hearing losses, but there are also some syndromic ones. And the one that is is the poster child for a inner ear disorder is a disease called Meniere's disease. In Meniere's disease, uh, the, there is a loss of function in both the cochlea and the vestibulum. So a person will have um, tinnitus, hearing loss, and uh, some form of vertigo and or disequilibrium. So Meniere's disease, uh, one, uh, it, it, there's a wide and um, diverse etiology, but one reason uh, that, that Meniere's disease can occur is if there's an increased pressure within the inner ear. This is called uh, endolymphatic hydrops, and there's just increased pressure. And that increased pressure will be shared between the cochlea and the vestibulum. Meniere's disease is extremely difficult to, to treat. It's an ongoing problem. It's very disturbing. As we'll see, um, when, when a person has a dysfunction of the vestibular system, not only do they feel this uh, 
vertigo and or disequilibrium, but they also have a very emotional reaction. They can feel nausea. They can feel very uh, anxious. It's a very unsettling uh, sensory system to go wrong. <clears throat> the final thing that, that is shared, but in a sort of an overlapping way between the vestibular system and the cochlea is a sensitivity to certain drugs. And this includes both the cisplat the, the chemotherapeutics such as cisplatin um, and also the uh, certain antibiotics. And these, these are ototoxic, but most of them have a preference for either uh, affecting the cochlea or affecting the vestibular uh, apparatus. Um, and, and you'll learn about that when you learn about pharmacology. Okay, so now we're going to go on and we're going to look at the vestibular hair cell.